Ulysses' story begins in Drywells, Arizona, where his tribe, the Twisted Hares, encountered Kaisar. But unlike the other tribes that were assimilated or eradicated, the Twisted Hares managed to strike a deal with the Legion and became their scouts, with Ulysses becoming one of the greatest scouts to ever bless the bull, travelling distances the others could only ever dream of. The thing that made him such a superb scout was his capacity to live off the land, making use of what grew in the desolate desert, which allowed him to travel lighter than most and cover greater distances in less time. But once the Legion's campaign had ended and Arizona was conquered, the Twisted Hares were rewarded with treachery, their delicate alliance broken, with all men, women and children enslaved, their tribal entity erased and all who fought back were crucified, setting an example for others who considered disobeying Kaiser. This pacification, for lack of a better word, was led by none other than Wulpez in Coulter. The brutal slaughter, while painful for Ulysses, was not enough to break his loyalty to the Legion, so he continued to serve the bull, but through habit, or perhaps defiance, he continued to twist his hair for which his tribe was known. Thanks to his abilities and robust character, he quickly became one of Kaisar's greatest frumentari, blending in as one of the many couriers who walked the wasteland, and he wasn't the only one. As such, he was ordered not to kill other couriers he encountered, as the Legion had many eyes and ears in that profession. In time, Ulysses had walked much of the Legion's territory, and was exploring new lands for tribes to conquer when he came across the Colorado River, and Hoover Dam, and the NCR a nation large enough to challenge Kaisar. Returning to his master, Ulysses told him what he saw, the dam, the largest wall he had ever seen, and the impeding republic that held it. While Kaisar became obsessed with taking the dam, Ulysses continued to roam, and between 2274 and 2277, he discovered a nation taking its first breath, a small community inhabiting the remnants of an old town known as the Divide named for its supply line that separated the east and west. This place was filled with old world symbols that fascinated him, and for a time Ulysses thought about leaving the Legion. But to his dismay, the Divide was discovered by the NCR, which then drew the attention of the Legion, and the small, prosperous community was now amidst two warring nations. Ulysses began to look for a way to free the Divide from their grasp, but before he could, a courier delivered a package containing a device the NCR had sent from Navarro because of the symbols it shared with the Divide. And this device woke up the old world. It had contained ICBM launch codes that automatically connected to the systems in the underground facilities and silos, which in turn detonated many of the nuclear warheads that were stored beneath their feet. The results were devastating. The earth was violently torn open, the landscape drastically transformed, supply lines were blocked with tons of broken stone and twisted steel, leaving those who were left to fend for themselves. Remnants of the bear and bull continued to fight until the new environment warped them into some new fangled faction that had no choice but to work together or die. Creatures crawled out from the darkness, their deep homes disturbed by the devastation, although those would come later. For now, Ulysses lay there dying amidst the ruins. Before he drew his last breath, a medical eyebot, which had also been activated by the device the courier had brought, found Ulysses and in a stroke of luck, recognized the old world flag on his back, and thinking he was a pre-war US soldier, administered first aid, which saved his life. After witnessing how a single individual could alter history or erase it altogether, Ulysses decided to do two things. First, he would hold the courier responsible for the destruction they had caused and would in some way get his revenge. And second, he would do the same. He would change history and reawaken America, believing the small community that had been destroyed would have been larger than the bear and greater than the bull and of the three, was the only one worthy of forging a future for humanity. And this is around the time where he took the name Ulysses. Before that, whatever name he went by is long forgotten, while his new name was taken from a book, alluding to the man who fought during a time of two flags, referencing Ulysses S. Grant, the 18th President of the United States of America, who once commanded the Union Army in the American Civil War. 
and without a home he returned to Kaisar where he discovered the Legion had lost at Hoover Dam. The Legate, Joshua Graham, had been executed for his failure, Linnaeus took his place as Legate and was sent to Colorado, Ulysses was sent to Utah, both following orders to replenish their numbers. In Salt Lake City, Ulysses met the White Legs, the descendants of European tourists who had survived the Great War and intertwined with Native Americans, a tribe that was once repelled by the Desert Rangers but once they were assimilated into the NCR, could roam free and wreaked havoc on passing caravans that was their main, if not only, source of food and supplies. So when interstates were abandoned, they were expected to die out within a generation, but Ulysses promised them a place within the Legion, and in return for securing a future for their tribe, all they had to do was cut off the NCR supply lines running through Utah, ransack New Canaan, and kill Joshua Graham, who had miraculously survived his execution. And so Ulysses became their mentor, although instead of calling him Ulysses, they referred to him as the Flag Bearer after the flag staff he carried, a weapon known as Old Glory, a wooden flagpole with a golden eagle on top, which may be another one of Caesar's instances of imitating the Roman Empire, as legions of the Roman Republic had two eagles which were never to be captured, symbolizing the legion's courage, so Ulysses may have been an eagle bearer for the legion. Whether he was or wasn't, he still taught the White Legs the value of the Legion, and gave them weapons from Old World bunkers and new Canaan caches, which strengthened them greatly. And for a time, he told the White Legs that Kaisar had limitless respect for those adept with firearms, which encouraged them to the point where they would later be known for their love of pistols and rifles and all things alike. We of course know that this is a lie, as Kaiser despises an over-reliance of firearms, instead preferring melee weapons, believing them to be more reliable, but is still known to employ them given the right situation. Even so, Ulysses would tell the White Legs what they needed to hear to get the job done, until they could be assimilated, that is. And this deceitful behavior reminded him of Wolpez in Coulter, and how his tribe, the Twisted Hares, had been mistreated by the Legion. He felt regret for what had happened, and perhaps ashamed of the side he had chosen. This feeling was forcefully pushed aside. But then something happened, something he couldn't ignore. The White Legs began to admire him, he became an inspiration to them, and as a sign of respect they began to braid their hair, mimicking his own dreadlocks, and while they saw it as a sign of respect, Ulysses saw it as a hollow mockery, only serving to remind him of what he had done and it truly forced him to look at the man he had become, and this man Ulysses saw was filled with remorse and shame. Not long after New Canaan was destroyed, Ulysses said farewell to the White Legs and to Kaisar, and went off to forge his own path, looking for a way to change history and reawaken America, seeing it as both peaceful and strong, and believing both the bear and bull had no long-term answer for the future, but would surely get in the way of those that did, as they already had once before, he wondered if there was a way to rid them both, but for now he needed to collect his thoughts, and so he retired to Wolfhorn Ranch, becoming a small-time rancher, and sometimes taking to the wasteland as a courier, all the while searching for a way to complete his quest. To tangent slightly, the grave at Wolfhorn Ranch represents Ulysses being cut out of the base game, as he was originally going to be a companion, but his recorded dialogue was so large it wouldn't fit on the disc, so he was scrapped and saved for later. Speaking of which, Ulysses later found Big Mountain, not by accident but by tracking the irregular weather pattern similar to those from the Divide. Knowing that the storms that appeared after the courier's delivery were unnatural, he followed the inclement weather, leaving his mark as he went, just in case he got lost, or for those who may follow, with red for hostile areas, white for the way forward, and blue for hidden caches. Eventually he came to a weather station at the edge of the crater, and beyond that the rest of Big Mountain, filled with old world technology. Inside the crater, Ulysses made a temporary home and began to explore Big Mountain, but soon found himself caught up in a strange conflict between Christine Royce, a knight serving the Circle of Steel, and Father Elijah, a rogue Brotherhood of Steel elder. Christine had been sent to kill Elijah because he had abandoned his chapter, but she was outwitted by the elder, who used prisoners of war as walking bombs. 
Christine was gravely wounded and taken away by robots to the Y-17 Medical Center, and Elijah slipped away to safety. Shortly after this clash, Ulysses made contact with Elijah. They spoke and traded stories. Elijah was searching for a way to begin again, much like himself. And during his time inside the weather station, he had learned of a place that had what Elijah was searching for. So he sent him on his way to the Sierra Madre, or at least in search of the casino signal. After that, they avoided one another, and Ulysses headed for the medical center, where Christine had been processed by the facility. Electrodes were jammed inside her brain, damaging her faculties. She could no longer read or write, but could still do equations and mathematical sums. She was currently held hostage by the medical robots. That was until Ulysses blew up part of the facility and rescued her, taking her back to his cave where she was tended to. From Christine, Ulysses learned of the Brotherhood of Steel and decided that they too would not be able to forge the future he desired. But before they parted ways, Christine gave him an old recorder that she had repaired as payment for rescuing her. This he would use many times over to record his thoughts, several of which can be found strewn throughout the Divide. Eventually, his exploration of the crater had him face to face with the Think Tank, the gods of Big Mountain. He spoke to them, Dr. Klein mostly, and he became angry with them with their lack of knowledge of the old world. He asked them, Who are you? I do not know what your history. This question, along with the old world flag painted on Ulysses' back, was enough to trigger recollections, overriding the memory wipes Dr. Mobius had installed. Then they remembered a whole world outside the crater, and told Ulysses where he could find America's voice and use it to wake up the old world. Deep in the heart of the Divide, nuclear silos, full of sleeping warheads, lay among the hellscape that now enveloped the ragged land. And not only the sleeping giants, but the device needed to wake them up. Ulysses departed Big Mountain, now having a way to wake up America. And with these warheads, he could reshape the world single-handedly, just as the Courier had done to the Divide. But first he needed to find the silos, which was easier said than done. As this new Divide had marked men, death claws, and tunnelers, and Ulysses would need time to prepare for his journey. So he returned to what he knew, delivering packages as a courier while preparing to enter the Divide and locate the undetonated warheads. It was during this time where Ulysses discovered that the courier who had destroyed the Divide, replacing it with another, was still alive. Victor had the Mojave Express hire six couriers, each to carry something a little different, a pair of dice, a chess piece, a platinum chip, a job that had strange written all over it, so when Ulysses saw their name on the list of couriers, one place after his own, Ulysses asked Johnson Nash if the name was for real, which it was. So he told him, Courier 6 needed to carry that specific package, and then he left without saying another word, but hoping the Mojave would sort them out. And while it certainly did try, the courier survived a bullet to the brain, rescued by Victor, patched up by Doc Mitchell, and was right as rain, minus the amnesia, which left them unable to remember almost everything about themselves and what they had done leading up to that night they almost died. In the meantime, Ulysses went to the Divide and scoured the ruins for a nuclear silo he could use. With a medical iBot by his side, he killed and clawed his way to the edge of the world where he would rewrite history. Now on the off chance Courier 6 somehow survived the unusual job, Ulysses had left them a simple message. The coordinates to the canyon wreckage that would lead them to the Divide, knowing they would come and walk the road and witness what they had done. He did, after all, want to punish them for destroying his home, and if he could, he would do the same to them. Courier 6, through curiosity or concern, walked the Divide, facing their own creation, and all the while Ulysses would communicate through Eddie and watch from the rooftops as they made their way to his temple. But if those nuclear missiles ever climbed the skies, killing the bull at Drywells and the bear at Long 15, erasing his betrayal and removing their grasp on the Mojave, allowing a new community to be made from the ashes of America without interference, has yet to be seen. All we know is that they talked about what the future should hold and who should hold it. But what happens after that, whether Ulysses was killed, or if the missiles were disarmed, or if he got what he wanted to rewrite history and create a new home worthy of forging a future for humanity, is up to you. It said, war, war, 
never changes. Men do, through the roads they walk. And this road has reached its end. Be sure to show your support by liking the video and subscribing if you haven't already for more Fallout content. If there's anything you would like to see in a later video, leave a comment and I'll see what I can do. With that said, thank you, as always, for watching, and I'll see you in the next adventure.